Yo, welcome back to the channel guys, Simply Pops here. Sony has officially announced the PS5 Pro. It's exactly how I predicted it. I made a video a couple of days ago showcasing the design, showcasing the features, and even talked about the price, which we're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But here are the big three features of the PS5. Basically the only thing that we're getting. Upgraded GPU with the PS5 Pro. It's going to have a 67% more compute units than the current PS5, which to be honest, the current base PS5 was already pretty powerful, fast CPU, fast SSD, but the PS5 Pro is going to take it to a whole nother level, bringing more power. Now, the second thing, advanced ray tracing. I love me some ray tracing, so making it even more powerful, more reflections and even fractions of the light and everything like that. It's cool. That's nice. But the PS5 already had ray tracing. Having more ray tracing is nice, but it's not necessary. And the third thing, AI driven upscaling. So this is PSSR, uh, which is an AI driven upscaling that use machine learning. So basically it's going to provide a more sharper image, especially if you're going to be playing uh, PS4 games and even uh, some games that's going to be updated to support the PS5 Pro performance. But all of this just to say that this is a more powerful PS5 essentially. And uh, it's everything seems nice. I mean, hey, it is an upgrade. You guys got to understand the PS5 is going to be uh, four years, right? Since the PS5 came out and next year would be five years. So we're already halfway through the console lifespan of the PS5, which is insane to even think about. And by the time you turn around, we're going to be talking about the PS6. And that leads me to think, given that the PS5 was already future proof right out the gate, giving us uh, 4K at 120, ray tracing, insanely fast SSD, is it really necessary to have a PS5 Pro bringing in more ray tracing, more GPU power? Is it really that necessary? I don't think so. And I think for most people, if you have a PS5 already, you should be perfectly fine. I would say this is mostly for the people who just love to upgrade. Like those of you guys that love to upgrade your phone every single year, this isn't going to be a problem for you. I mean, this is like light work. I mean, hey, it's been four or five years since the PS5. Hey, the PS5 Pro is going to be faster. So you're not even going to flinch. And I'm one of those guys. I'm going to be honest. I'm i'm just one of those guys but i'm speaking for the average consumer especially when the ps5 first came out during the pandemic it was insanely hard to get and i just remember it like it was like two years ago but damn that was that was five years ago almost that it was hard to get a ps5 and people are getting a ps5 now and the fact that you're seeing this announcement now it's like wow it's crazy but later on that we're going to talk about that price tag because the price will make a big difference which you guys already know i'm going to give my opinion on that but yeah man i don't think it's going to be for everybody it's mostly going to be for the tech enthusiasts people who wants the the latest and greatest the most power the most advanced technology that's me that's definitely me the most powerful playstation that playstation has ever made this is it by the time you turn around the ps6 is going to be around the corner so maybe give it another three four years until the ps6 releases and wow and that time will be here before you know it and that's something to really kind of think about too and that transition to the price point i mean this is going to cost you 699 dollars 700 dollars for a ps5 pro and given its power that is pretty expensive it's a tough pill to swallow but if you build a PC, you're nowhere near going to touch $700. I mean, so if you want to look at it from that point, that's a good price. But from a console perspective, that's a tough one. I mean, that's pretty tough. But, yay, you're getting Wi-Fi 7. You're getting 8K gaming supported and VRR. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But it's just it's one of those things where you got to think, is it necessary? And to put the cherry on top... It doesn't even include an optical drive. So you will have to provide that separately or buy that separately for $80. Um, and it doesn't even include the stand, which I don't really care too much about the vertical stand, to be honest, because I always lay my consoles flat down in the entertainment stand. But it's just it's unfortunate. 
$700 is a lot of money to drop on a console, but of course I'm going to get it. I'm going to review it. You guys already know me, but, um, but for someone that's going to feel like they being left out, I wouldn't feel that way until the release of GTA six. Now, if you're not a GTA player, you're not going to really care too much about it, but GTA six is going to play an important role for the PS five pro because let's say to run 60 frames per second, you want the best GTA 6 experience, you got to get the PS5 Pro. That's going to that's where it's going to fly off the shelves. I mean, if you want the best performance, if you want the the high frames, you got to get a PS5 Pro. And I think that's where this is going to come into play. But also, is it too soon to announce this? Is it like is it time? Given that the games are still performing well on PS5, I mean, you still get your 4K at 120. In games like Astrobot looks absolutely stunning. It's just not necessary. I think a perfect comparison would have to be the PS4 Pro. That was a different time. 2016, it made sense. I mean, the PS4 Pro is supported 4K TVs where it can upscale, so it made sense. That's when 4K was getting into people's homes and it made sense comparing to the base PS4. But the PS5 Pro, 4k was already a thing and we still have 120 hertz and maybe they push an 8k but 8k is another topic for another day it's nowhere near as mainstream as 4k now but you are getting a 2 terabyte ssd this time around which is nice but it would have been nicer if they included the optical drive for $700 and i think people would still complain about the price of course given that it is $700 this is a perfect reminiscent to the PS3 when that first was announced. It was an ultimate disaster, but I still love the PS3. It's still an important history of PlayStation, but um, but yeah, it, it's it's crazy, man. PS5 Pro is available as a discless console with the option to purchase the currently available disc drive separately. That is insane. I mean, that that's crazy. Now. For someone who already have a PS5 digital edition, this isn't really going to affect me too much because I already I didn't even have a disk drive to begin with. So uh, spending that three ninety nine on the PS5 digital edition and upgrading to the PS5 Pro, I already have all my games digitally. Um, I can't even tell you when was the last PS5 game that I purchased physically. I can't even tell you when was the last time. I mean, I think it was probably like Demon Souls just to test it out for a video that I made like a couple of years ago. For me, I really don't care about the optical disk drive at all. Uh, it's just the price. I was really hoping that Sony would price it at six hundred dollars. Uh, I think that would have been a more compelling price tag. Just a hundred dollars more compared to the PS5 Slim, which costs four ninety nine, five hundred dollars, and that includes the optical drive but a whopping $200 more plus an $80 optical drive is is ludicrous to say the least for a gaming console and i understand inflation and it's a different economy now compared to when the ps5 first came out and even when the ps4 pro came out things are going to be more expensive and that's just the world we live in inflation is a scary thing and i'm not sure how much the ps5 pro costs for sony to assemble but it's one of those things where i remember with the ps5 they they take a loss for everybody who buys a ps5 because it was like 399 and 499 but with this being 700 dollars, that's a big leap but if they price this competitively and have a lot of people buy it then you kind of make the money back within services accessories and things like that versus if you charge high now and nobody buys it either way they're still going to make money with uh, accessories and ps plus and subscriptions and things like that but this is uh, it's just a it's a terrible pr uh having that price so high and like i said i understand the uproar on it but needless to say pre-orders will begin on september 26th and it will launch on november 7th of this year of course and I will get my hands on it. Potentially, I might even get my hands on it early. It's a chance. I have a really good partnership with PlayStation and Sony. I am still excited just to test out how the games are going to look. Um, and I know Sony did this. They showed a side-by-side -side comparison, uh, comparing performance mode and fidelity and how better the 
the graphics look, but I want to test it out for myself, and I can't wait to do that. Just the testing purposes, I'm excited for. And who knows? Maybe the PS5 Pro will live up to his name, and it'll be like no more deciding between fidelity and performance. This might be the end of that, and I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Give me advanced ray tracing with 120 frames per second at 4k i mean i'm all for that and that is where i'm going to conclude today's video let me know down in the comments down below are you planning on picking up a ps5 pro you do you think it's overpriced or do you think it's reasonably priced i mean let me know i'm very curious to know drop a like on this video subscribe with notifications on for coverage on the ps5 pro especially when it first comes out and until next time guys i hope you all have a simple day